Hey everybody, welcome back to the 440 build. Today we're going to be doing the torquing of the rod bolts and doing the connecting rod side clearance checks. But before we do, I thought we would do something fun and uh, figure out how big this engine is. So as you know, this is what I call a 440 or what people call a 440, but it's board 30 over. So I thought we would take a few minutes and for those interested, I guess I will go over it. If you're not, well, fast forward. Um, it's a pretty simple calculation. I, I think it's interesting, but I guess if you had trouble in geometry, uh, maybe this is an old nightmare for you. Uh, but let's get started with uh, what we've got here is a V8 engine. And it's obviously eight cylinders, all of the same size. So what you want to do is just figure out the volume of one of these cylinders, right? So each one has a bore and a stroke. Probably drew that a little bit out of uh, scale, but it'll work. And we have to just figure out the volume of the soup can, basically. All right? So we know the bore on a 440 is 4.320. And in this case, I'm bored 30 over, right? So we are really at 4.350, all right? And we know the stroke on a 440 is 3.75. And we're talking inches, of course, on everything. So the formula, if you remember, uh, for volume is pi r squared times this distance or length here, which we call the stroke on an engine, and um, real easy to calculate, right? So we know pi is 3.14, and I think it's 3.1416, if I'm not mistaken. All right, times the radius, so we need half of the diameter. So grab a calculator, unless you can do that in your head. Let's give that a shot, 4.350. It's cold out here. My calculator's not woke up. 4.350 divided by 2. Okay, so our radius is 2.175. You can square that or just multiply it by itself. 2.175, right? Times the length. Uh, so let's go ahead and work through that real quick. Uh, 2.175 times 2.175 is 4.73 so basically 3.14 times 4.73 times the stroke excuse my writing okay times 3.1416 all right so this is 14.86 and i'll say two times our stroke, which is 3.75, gives us 55.73 cubic inches, times eight cylinders, right? Four forty five point eight five. or let's call it 446, because that's a cool number. Reminds me of the 446 pack. All right, so we don't have a 440 anymore. We have a 446 cubic inches, all right? This was inches, this was inches squared, and we have 446 cubic inch engine. So that's kind of cool. And if you're 60 over, well, it's probably around 452. Um, you can work this out for your own engine. Just figure out how much you're bored over, if any. Figure out what that is. Divide it by 2 to get to the radius. Square your radius times pi um, times the stroke. And then multiply it times however many cylinders you have. Hopefully 8 if you're working on a muscle car. All right. Well, let's get back to the engine. I guess first thing, let's check uh, what we need to be. Connecting rod side clearance. What does that say? 0.009 to 0.0017.
All right, so nine thousandths to seventeen thousandths. Okay, get this set up here. I guess we can see the whole engine. And hopefully that's not in the way of my uh, socket to turn the engine over. All right, well, first thing, uh, let's start out working on cylinders one and two. So we're going to bring the engine around. Let's get that up a little higher, easier to work on. That should work right there. Okay. And I guess first thing we're going to want to do is just torque everything down. Again, we're using the ARP Ultra Torque Assembly Lubricant to make sure we get an accurate torque reading. Um, I'm going to go through these. I'll do one and two. Um, we'll, we're going to just do all this real quick. We'll probably rotate it around and pick up um, five and six and whatever the next one that comes around, seven, eight, and then back to three, four. Uh, we aren't going to forget anything. We'll go through it real, real methodically. And um, some people, I guess, mark these with a paint pen and all that. But I think as long as you do it all at once, you're going to be okay. Um, so first thing we want to do, and I did calibrate my torque wrench. I took it to work. I checked it against two other torque wrenches that had been inspected and calibrated so that I know this thing is rock solid at 50 foot-pounds. Uh, I checked it at a couple different settings, and um, it's probably a good thing to do to make sure you have a known good torque wrench not just something that's been sitting on the shelf or something that you've maybe had the spring torque down hard and sitting in the drawer. So always relax these things when you're done using them. And uh, I think what we'll do is we'll go, uh, we'll go 26 foot pounds and then we will go up to uh, probably like mm, 38, I'd say, and then up to 50. So we'll do it in three steps. Okay, so first we're going on 26. I'm going to go just nice and easy. We're not even getting up on 26 yet. Probably bringing it about to 20. So hand tight to get started. Whoops. There's that camera getting in the way. Okay, there's 26. And 26 there. I'm going to go a little bit more on these. Oh, 26. And 26. Okay. And what did I say? We're going to bring it to 38. So there's 30. 38. Okay. And remember, uh, the stock bolts are 45. And these ARP heavy-duty bolts are 50. There's other race bolts or even more heavy duty that might be 55. So check the specification of whatever rod bolt you're using. Okay, good. All right, well, I'm thinking I'm gonna go all the way to 50 on the next one. So rotate this around to 50. So again, we put the ARP lube on the bottom of the nut, on the threads. Should be getting good torque readings. Sorry for pausing when I talk, that's annoying. My brain and my eyes and everything only can do one thing at a time. All right, good. So we are all set on this one and let's bring it around. Well, we could actually check that. Uh, rod clearance while we're at it. So uh, you can see here these float back and forth just a little bit. You can kind of squeeze them back and forth and watch the gaps open up. And uh, we want to be between nine and seventeen thousandths. So I think I'm gonna, you know, these rods have been reconditioned and when they do they take a little material, you know, off the sides, just clean them up a little bit so you lose a couple thousandths. Well, that's actually opening up your, your side clearance. So um, if your rods have been cleaned up on the sides, you're probably a little bit on the loose. You're not going to be at nine or ten thousandths. Uh, uh, they're not going to add material and machine those back down. So I'm going to try a 13 to get started here. Okay. All that goes. Yep. 
Let me go up to 15 and see what that's like. 15 thousandths. Yeah, it's a little tight. It doesn't go down far. So I'm going to say we're probably at 14. Yeah, let's go with 14 thousandths. Yeah, 14. Okay, we're 14 there. That's good. That's pretty much right in the middle, just a hair over. Um, and we're going to continue. So um, let's bring this around. And keep going on our torquing the rod bolts. Okay, so the next one coming into view here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to work on five, six. Back this thing back down. Okay. Go with that. 26. Let's start out just snugging them up a little more. It's a much bigger tool than I used to put them on. I was working with a 3 ace ratchet. Right, so... Bring these around until they feel even to the touch. Oh, there we go. 26. That comes up fast. Good. Okay. And up to 30. And 38. And then to 50. Stretching the bolts. They're not going to come loose. They are stretched. Not so much that they're going to break. But that's why you got to be careful and be at the right spec and know your torque wrench is good all right so let's check this one okay side clearance here you can check it between the rods if you want looks like this is a little bit loose yeah. we're gonna go with let me check 13 yeah but 12 was loose. I'm gonna go up to 14. Yeah. Maybe even 15 on that one. Yeah, the neighbors are out there with the dirt bikes. Man, it's 30 degrees outside. Okay. Oh geez, I got them doubled up there. That's the problem. 15. I'm like, why won't that go? Yep, 15. Okay, so 15 on that one. We're 14, 15, we're good. Okay, let's bring that engine around a little more. And get after the next two. Okay, seven and eight coming around. And I guess you got the hang of it now. We're gonna continue, I'll let the camera roll. But uh, it's not going to get any more interesting. So <laughs> if you got to go, you got to go. All right. That one snuck up on me. Good. All right. 38. Beauty and fifty. Fifty. 
feels like a lot on a small fastener, I will say that. But that's where we want to be. Okay, let's check this one. Let's see if we get lucky at 15. Well, it's snug. Try 14. Fourteen doesn't want to go easy either. Okay. It's easier on the back side here. I'm going to go back to fourteen. Thirteen was easy there. Well, it's right on the edge. I guess it depends where you check it. 14, we're going to say. All right. Looking good. We're in spec between 9 and 17. Okay, and what do you know? Here comes 3 and 4. Right about there. Okay. Back to 26. Okay, 26. And 50. All right. Those are the last ones. One more clearance check. We'll see where we're at. Where do we leave off? 14 is sticking up. No. Well, again, it depends where you check it. Let's go with the 13. I'll check it up in the front here. In between the two. Feels tight. Right there, we get 13 to go. Yeah. 13. 13 thousandths. So you were right in the ballpark. Uh, 13 to 15 thousandths. That's just a little more than the middle of the... Uh, the tolerance specification, so we're good to go. All the rods are torqued. I'm going to call it a wrap. All right, well, we'll see what we come back with next time. Thanks for sticking with me.